Hi, we're looking at three um, dual inlaid bows. Francois Xavier Taut began the practice of inlaying gemstones into bows around 1807. As far as we know, that was pretty much the first one that we've heard of. Um, that was the Davidov of 1807 as I said and that was uh, commissioned by the French government he then went on in 1815 to do uh, the Delamere cello bow which is diamond inlaid in that instance they had diamond in into the panelled button at the back this is a uh, much later and it's stamped to JB Voyome à Paris uh, it's a, a baroque homage bow they were made in ivory up to 1947 and these are obviously the kind of top of the range of the examples. What we use here, the primary um, point of this video is to show that these are genuine gemstones. What we have is the question, whenever anybody shows us a, a gemstone inlaid bow, the question arises of are they genuine? What we have is a thermal conductivity gem tester as you can see each gem has a property of thermal conductivity which is shown on the scale there we have a calibration device here which shows a simulant stone or a fake diamond and this is a real diamond and from that calibration all of the others are calibrated so when we go to test a sapphire like this one here you can see get it right on the thing you can see the sapphire there clearly there's sapphire I'm holding it on there these are diamonds in, into the uh, Viome bow and when you do that you can clearly see there's nothing simulated which can actually um, make a diamond you can create a sapphire but you cannot actually do a diamond it's uh, created under pressure in the Earth's crust and there's no possible way of replicating that. Rubies are by far the rarest of the three stones. We have blue sapphires here, probably from Ceylon around that period. Diamonds, which were from numerous different sources in history. But rubies are very, very much rarer. And as you can see, they're part of the sapphire group, so they come around the ruby sapphire range. You can see that's clearly a ruby on there. And the back, the other side, um, ruby. It's of vital importance, obviously. We are registered as goldsmiths. Um, which is why we have all of our bows hallmarked as we've mentioned in other videos you can see this is an 18 karat laser hallmark uh, ferrule here we generally hallmark the ferrules even so it's very important that we're not selling fake gemstones with our bows and we're very keen to uh, have a strong interest in good gemstones the, the primary thing that we look at when we're looking at a gemstone and, and a lot of the decision making is done by eye as well as by using equipment such as the thermal conductivity tester. What we're looking for is obvious signs of fabrication which are actually usually present. We also look for the quality of the stone and as you can see possibly in there the primary concern is refractive capability in a diamond and also black inclusions, carbon inclusions of which these have absolutely none. There's no black dots in there. The fluorescence and radiance of the stone is of, of vital importance in the quality of diamonds as well. And so we want to see a good bright, we don't want to see any milky kind of hue to it. When you're looking at rubies one of the pr problems is that uh, in later years they were often lead glass filled so we're looking for glass fissures to have been filled we know these to be unheated and un untreated which is rare as a ruby gets bigger particularly it's very much more common to find them 
uh, treated with uh, lead glass filling. Obviously, that shows up as lead glass if there's a lot of lead glass in there, which is around about here on the on the tail. You can see glass there, <laughs> and ruby is up here. So there's a tremendous um, difference between the actual density of glass and ruby, which is uh, an eight and a half to nine hardness stone. We also look through a blue light, at, particularly at diamonds, because a blue light will show fissures, and this is a times 60 microscope. So when we look through a times 60, we can see a very different picture through a blue light of any flaws which are of the non-carbon type, which usually turn up as white lines. We generally look at a coloured stone through a white light, and a pure white light will give a good indication of the nature of the colour that you're looking at. Whether it's a good colour stone, whether it's nice, uh, and the opacity of the stone. Dodd is well documented as having placed gemstones for uh, his customers whenever they asked. He obviously was able to source them and make a profit out of doing so and therefore it became something that he offered as a feature for some of his bows. This is uh, it's either... These are fine quality rubies. Obviously when you're talking about a base bow there's so much precious metal involved in, especially when you have a solid button there. There's so much precious metal involved that it, it would be virtually impossible for most people to afford that done in gold yet to place a couple of small accents in terms of precious gemstones it was more um, financially possible and so that was one of the things that they did with a violin bow there's considerably less precious metal involved and so it was much more easy to place good quality gold parts on there. We also have, if there's a stone missing or if we decide that the stone is secured with glue which has become discoloured over the years, we might remove a stone, clean the dirty old style glue off and use a modern gem uh, glue around the stone because the often yellowing and crackled nature of the glue ruins the effect of the stone. If we do that and we clean up a stone we're able then to use a gen refractometer which will give us a very accurate uh, refractive index reading of the stone and then allow us to decide whether it's a fake or not or whether it's a real thing. We also look for refractivity and whether it's a doubly refractive or singly refractive stone. Uh, different stones have different properties and so there are different instruments to find out whether they are genuine or not. These are the things that we do to make sure you get what we describe in the listing. We don't buy fake stone bows and we don't sell them. What we like to do is to get you items as described. Thanks very much.